Hello everyone, we had a nice green week. Most stocks rebounded from their slump and closed the week with decent gains. So now the question is, will this rally continue? If yes, is this a reversal or is it a dead cat bounce? In this video, I will share my views on the nice rally we had last week. And per previous videos, I will also cover some simple technical analysis for the various mega cap stocks. Before I move on, please help me with the like and subscribe buttons so that we can reach out to more viewers out there. Your small action means a lot to me and the YouTube algorithm. The S&P 500 had a decent 6.5% gain last week to stage a big comeback week after it slumped to the worst weekly decline since the start of the pandemic in the previous week. In fact, Friday's rally of about 3.1% was S&P 500's biggest daily percentage gain since May 2020. Other indices such as Nasdaq and Dow Jones also ended their losing streaks. Looking good, huh? So, is this a reversal or a dead cat bounce? Currently, I am of the view that the stock market was oversold since the CPI data was out about two weeks ago, and hence, it was time for a bounce. I don't think the market is ready to reverse its course and go to all-time high yet. The reason is simple, it's because nothing much has changed. War is going on, inflation is still not curbed yet, Fed is getting more aggressive in their rate hike, global supply chain issues still persist. Therefore, this bounce is not convincing in my opinion. It is likely that the market is just doing its usual thing, which is whipsawing, going up and down, up and down, simply because the market doesn't rise or fall in one straight line, just like this chart that you see here. Despite not being convinced by the current rally, I would not be surprised if the market continues its mini recovery phase with the rally continuing in the near term. I have shared before on Mumu, bear market rally can be rather fierce at times, as shown by this tweet. But a quick disclaimer, this is just my personal view and I could be very wrong. I would think it's better to watch how the stock chart moves as we enter next week and even the week after. So now let's move on to the technical aspects to see how we can kind of determine if the rally can continue, though nothing is guaranteed. Okay, first up, SPY. There were two gaps created earlier this month as shown by this chart, and last week we managed to fill up one of it, and it appears that it may be heading towards the second gap to fill it. When we look at it closer, there seems to be a bullish divergence as the RSI shows a higher low while the chart shows a lower low. This could be why the market had 5 green candles immediately after the divergence was formed. On the MACD, it seems like it wants to curl up, and if that happens, there could be more upside. To add on, the stock has broken out of the downward trend line. I have also previously shared that usually when it had about 2-3 to three candles above the downward trend line, it is bullish, and this is one classic example. So moving forward, as long as it does not fall below the downward trend line, the rally could continue. On the upside, there are several resistance levels which could potentially reject the rally. Using the Fibonacci retracement levels, where I drew from the recent low to the peak of this year, aka January 2022, the levels to watch out would be 405 and 419, as we have already cleared 389 last week, which will now act as a support. Personally, I would include 400 as a resistance level too, as it is a psychological level. And also, depending on how one draws the Fibonacci retracement level, 399 seems to be a resistance point as well if I were to draw it from the recent low to the high in March this year. And if it hits that level, it means that the gap between 394 to 399 would be filled. And who knows, sellers may start coming in and traders may start taking profits. Honestly, we will never know. So yeah, 399 to 400 will be a key area to keep an eye on. Next, one of my favourites, Apple, very similar to SPY, two gaps down and one was filled as the stock moves up, with the second one almost filled. Likewise, the stock also moved out of the downward channel. I think filling the second gap should likely happen, which is around 142.53. From there, we will have to see how the market moves to determine if the rally can continue. The first resistance on the upside is the green line that I have drawn some time ago, around 149 to 150. Coincidentally, that's where the 50 moving average is as well. So you get the drift. This is a key area to watch. Apple needs to break above this to unlock more upside. On the downside, as long as it doesn't break back into the downward channel, I would say we are fine. 
we have 140 and 137 as support levels now. But say if it falls back into the downward channel and looking at the extended channel, um, I think 120's range can come into play. Anyway, any sign of weaknesses would be a good opportunity for me to load up more shares and also to sell put options. This brings me to my Apple put option trades. Okay, I have actually shared this on Moomoo platform, but I thought to briefly capture it here in case some viewers may have missed it. When the market opened on 10 June, a Friday, and 13 June, which is a Monday, Apple gapped down. In my view, it is very rare for a strong company like Apple to gap down on two consecutive trading days, and I was of the view that the market had overreacted. The broader market and RSI indicator also showed that it was entering the oversold zone. Hence, I make a decision to sell a put contract on both occasions as I was quite confident that Apple will go back up to fill the gap, even if it's just temporarily. Remember what I've shared earlier, market moves up and down, so Apple did what I thought and rebounded quite nicely, and both of my contracts are doing good now. In hindsight, we could have said that since this is such a confident play, why not sell 5 or 10 contracts and that would have backed me 5 to 10x returns, giving me thousands of dollars in 2 weeks. Well, all I can say is hindsight is always 20-20. And also a disclaimer, this method may not work all the time, so do watch out for other technical and macro factors as well. Moving forward, I will likely wait for weaknesses again before selling another put contract for Apple. As I have shared on Momo, huge and drastic movement in either direction gives traders an opportunity to make money. Next, we have Tesla. It also broke out of the downward channel marked by the two red lines, as well as the descending triangle indicated by the two yellow lines. This shows that it is bullish at the moment. But will the rally continue? We don't know. Keep a lookout for 746 which seems like a strong resistance as it attempted to break above it on many occasions but failed to do so. If it close above it, I think it has a very high chance to shoot towards $800. To also highlight, the current 50 moving average stands at around 792, so if Tesla can close above $800, it means it has gone past 3 key resistance levels. So what does this mean? Different investors can interpret differently. Some will think that Tesla is going to the moon. But in my view, if that happens, it could be a chance for investors or traders to short the rip or take profits. Anyway, do note that this is not financial advice, alright? Okay, Nvidia, a few things to watch. It is currently still within the descending triangle that I have drawn. For your knowledge, descending triangle is considered a bearish pattern. And on paper, it should hit downwards. But remember, nothing is guaranteed and chart patterns can be invalidated anytime. If we were to take a closer look, it seems like it wants to break above the triangle. So if the broader market continues to go up, Nvidia will likely follow suit. So let's see what happens next week. To also highlight, there is this gap between 176 to 180 that is waiting to be filled. Resistance wise, we are looking at this red line that I have drawn some time ago, which is around 178 which coincides with where the gap is. Also keep a lookout for the 50 moving average at 182. So let's see if Nvidia gets rejected at either of this resistance after filling the gap. If it doesn't get rejected, we may head towards 190 or even close to $200. Next, a quick one on Meta. If the market rallies and Meta goes up to, keep a lookout for 184 where the next key resistance level is. On the downside, as long as 154 holds, we should be fine. If 154 and 150 break, we could see a waterfall down. Looking at MACD, it seems like it wants to go up, but it's not confirmed yet. It should show some indication in the next few days. To also highlight, there is a gap between 172 and 175. So same as some of the other earlier stocks, let's see if it gets rejected after filling the gap. A quick summary of the technical analysis, it seems like the various mega cap stocks is heading upwards to fill the gaps that were created when CPI data was announced. So I think it's good to watch the stocks movement after the gaps are filled. In other words, let the market makers decide the direction. Sometimes when gaps are filled, sellers may step in. So revisit the resistance levels that I have mentioned earlier to have a sensing of the direction. Alright, to wrap this video up, I want to take this opportunity to highlight that a number of the mega companies such as Apple, Tesla, Microsoft, Google and Meta 
will be reporting their Q2 result from 25th to 27th July, and that's about a month from now. This means that the market could be even more volatile leading to the earning calls. And they say stock market is always forward looking, so you will never know if sellers could be selling their stock soon, in anticipation of poor results due inflations and supply chain issues. Again, quick disclaimer, this is not my assumption, my intention is to caution investors to be cautious. But if we are basing purely on technical aspect, the charts are looking bullish at the moment, and the rally could be slightly extended until, yes, note the word until the market proves us otherwise. For instance, the stocks get rejected at the various resistance levels, and who knows this could happen next week. All in all, as I have always been repeating, I am of the view that the market will remain bleak and bearish as long as the Fed is hawkish. And for Fed to be less hawkish, the prerequisite would be a lower inflation. But as it stands, inflation is still high, and therefore Fed's current tightening cycle will remain as a huge headwind for the stock market. As for the current rally, all I can say is sometimes the bigger the bounce, the bigger the dump. Well, it may not always happen, but it's good to err on the safe side. Alright, that's all for this video. If you have found some value in this video, I really hope you can hit the like and subscribe buttons. They mean a lot to me and will keep me going. Thank you.